In today's video, I'll show you how to install and configure reading glasses. Thanks to SLS81351 for the suggestion. Reading Glasses is a drop-in replacement for Readar's now defunct metadata service. It works with your existing Readar instance and is backwards compatible with your existing libraries, both ebooks and audiobooks. It's basically corrective lenses for Readar. Let's get Reading Glasses installed. If you just want to fix Readar the quick and easy way by using a third-party metadata service of Reading Glasses, let me show you how to do that. But if you want to actually self-host it, stick around, we'll get to that in a moment. To just fix it, let me show you what to do. We're going to open up our instance of Readar. So I'll jump over to my Docker tab. We'll find Readar. It's under my Media Automation folder. We'll go to the icon for it, drop down, and select Web UI. We'll go up to the URL field, and we'll type in a location that you normally can't get to. Up in the field, you should already have the URL and port number for Readar. Afterward, we'll add a forward slash, the word settings, another forward slash, and then development. So you should now have the IP address for your server, a colon, the port number for Readar, a forward slash, settings, forward slash, development. Once that's in there, press enter, and it'll bring you up to this page. Under the metadata service provider, we're going to go to the metadata source, and in here, you're going to put in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash api dot book info dot pro you'll go up you hit save changes and you're done but i'm assuming you're here to install your own self-hosted instance because you'd rather rely on your own stuff versus some third party let me show you how to do that i'm not going to save this i'm just going to leave it the way it is exit out and we'll get on with the installation before we install reading glasses there's a few prerequisites that you need to know about one, you got to have a Postgres 17 database. If you don't have Postgres installed, I'll leave a link in the description and I'll leave a link to that video as well up here. And I like to create all my databases with Adminer, just makes it quick and easy. If you don't have Adminer installed, once again, I'll have a link to that in the description and you can find it up here as well. Let's go create that database now. I'm going to log into Adminer, so I'm going to find it in my Docker list. I have mine under my database services folder. I'm going to open that up. I'll find Adminer in the list. It's already running. We'll click on the icon for it and select Web UI. Now it wants me to log in. First thing I'm going to do is change the system from MySQL MariaDB down to the Postgres database. The server IP is going to be the IP address for your Postgres server, which is most likely your server's IP address. So I'll put in my demo server here. Next down, we've got username. If you did follow along in my Postgres video, then in there I did say that I'm going to set the username and password to Postgres just to keep it simple. So that's what I'm going to enter here. So username is Postgres, password is also Postgres. If yours is something different, obviously use what you've created. Once you have those in there, go ahead and hit login, and then it should log you into the database. Once you're in there, at the top, we're going to click on Create Database. We'll give it a name here, and I'm going to call it Reading Glasses. That's R-R-E-A-D-I-N-G hyphen glasses. Then we'll hit Save. Now that the database is created, let's go on to installation. We'll go back to our Unraid server. We'll go to apps, we'll go to the search box in the top left, and we'll search for reading glasses. Once again, that is R-R-E-A-D-I-N-G, and the space, then glasses. And you should find a nice little smiley emoji icon. Once you find it listed there, go ahead and click on install. And you'll see that it says you're going to need Postgres installed. And then depending on which service you're going to use, Goodreads or hardcover, you'll need one of those two items. Basically, at this window, just hit OK. Now we can start filling out the required container information. The name, Reading Glasses, is fine. We can scroll down to the port number. Port number 8788 is the default port number for Reading Glasses. Let's see if that's available. I'm going to scroll all the way down, expand Show Docker Allocations, scroll back up, find that port number again, double click on it so it's highlighted, hit Control F on the keyboard, brings up the Find feature. It shows three in use, one, two, and we got to see what else is using it here. Speaker. All right, for me, Speaker is using that same port number, so I have to change it. If yours is free and it's not in use, you just have two results, then feel free to move forward with the default port. Like I said, mine's in use, so I'm going to change it. I'm going to go up one number, so it's going to be 8789, and I'll see if that's available. And it shows none in use. There's nothing currently used down here. So that one I can change it to. I'll go back to the port number and change it from 8788 to 8789. Next down we have Postgres host. This is gonna be the IP address of your Postgres server. In my case, 
it's on the demo server here, so 10.0.0.11, you would enter your server IP address there. Next down, we've got Postgres user. This is the user of our Postgres account. Once again, if you followed along in my previous video, I had set it to Postgres. Here's just something different, obviously set it accordingly. Password, once again, Postgres. Next down, we have Postgres database, which is RR reading glasses, and that's the name of the database that I created. So that's fine. If you have something different, obviously you'll have to set it to what yours is named. Postgres SQL port. The default is 5432. Mine is on the default, so I'll leave it alone. If you are unsure what your port number is, easiest way to do it, since we've already got the Docker allocations expanded here, you can just go back up to your find window here and put in Postgres there. Look down below and you'll find it listed there. Over to the right, you'll find the port number that it's using, which is the default 5432. We don't need that. Close that out. We'll go back up. All right, next down, we've got cookie. This is going to be the cookie for your Goodreads account. It's going to be a session cookie. If you're just running reading glasses for yourself, you know, a couple of users maybe, then I wouldn't bother with it because it's going to limit it to one result a second. So 60 a minute. If you go down and expand, show more settings, you'll see that the RPM there, you'll see it set for 60. So 60 requests per minute. So one a second, which is the default. If you don't have a cookie, if you do have it, you can go ahead and put one in there. And if you're going to have a, a lot of users, it's not a bad thing to do. But I've tested it with it and without it, it didn't seem to make a difference either way. So I'm just not going to put one in. All right, next time we've got the upstream account. We're going to be using the Goodreads account. So the www.goodreads.com is by default in there. We're going to leave that alone and carry on. You do have the ability to use a hardcover account. We're not going to cover that in this video. It's either Goodreads or a hardcover. I think most people use Goodreads, so we're just going to leave it the way it is, the defaults, and go on. We can hide the Docker allocations now. We are pretty much done. And one last thing to note here before we hit apply is if you'd changed your port number up here, then you have to go down to the bottom and expand and show more settings. And you'll find that port number listed there. We need to change it there as well. Since I had to change mine, I will change mine down here as well. 8789. Now we can hide the settings and hit apply. And while that's installing, why don't you come join us on Discord? I'll leave a link down in the description. And once that's done, go ahead and click done. All right, now let's jump over to the Docker tab. We'll find reading glasses in the list here. Over on the right hand side, I'm going to toggle on auto start. All right, so now let's talk about how to use reading glasses. It's a pretty simple thing. Once it's set up, there's really no use to it. Radar is just going to use the metadata that reading glasses generates. So let's go take a look at Radar before we make any changes and see what kind of results we have. So let's go open up Radar, find it in the list, expand the folder here. And once logged in, I'm going to click on the Authors tab. On yours, take a look around, see what you've got. Like you can see this author here is kind of a shrunk down letterbox version of himself. This guy's kind of cut off in the sides. Stephen King's kind of cut off on the sides, as is that one. If you were like that, this guy doesn't even have a picture. And not all authors will. Now let's go over to our books. So over on the left, I'll click on books. And then notice some of the books here. We've got like 2010, A Space Odyssey. There is no cover for it. Same thing with 2010. 2001, it looks to be cut off in the top and the bottom. This Douglas Adams one, same thing. A couple of them are kind of like that. This is just kind of a very rudimentary cover on that one. These are all cut off. This meaning of life here is kind of squished down. So that's what my books and authors look like currently. So now let's go make the metadata change in Radar, and we'll refresh everything and then see what changes. But before we do that, let's go open the log for reading glasses and see what that says. All right, we'll find reading glasses in the list, find its icon, drop down and go to logs. And you should find just a couple items in here. The last one says listening on whatever your port number is. All right, we're going to leave this window open. We're not going to close it. So I'm just going to drag it off to the side for now so I can get back to it. We'll go back into Radar. And in here, we're going to need to go to that special page again. So it's going to be the IP address for Radar, the port number, and then forward slash, the word settings, forward slash development. Once you have it in there, hit enter, go to that site. Then under metadata service provider, metadata source, this is where we need to put in the IP address and the port number for our reading glasses instance. So it's going to be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash the server IP address followed by a colon 
And then the port number for your reading glasses. Mine is 8789. The default is 8788. Once you have that all set, we're going to go up to the top left here and click on Save Changes. Now on the left side of Readar, we're going to go back to our library. We'll click on Any Author. Top left, we're going to click on Refresh and Scan, and that should go out and force a new scan. Let me drag the log window back over, and you'll see here that it's starting to get results. Author IDs are popping up. Great. At this point, we'll just let it go for a bit. It's going to update the metadata. I'm going to go over to my books here. We'll hit update on all those authors. Once again, update all those. I went to my author here. Don't know who he is. Refresh and scan. Go over to our books. We'll update one of these. And you'll see it was quick. Pulled in the new metadata for it, new cover image. If we go back to the log here. Let me drag that back over. You'll see a lot more results have kind of popped in and shown up. So basically, you just let it go now, and it'll go through and refresh metadata and get everything set up for all your authors and your books. And you'll see it's still uh, fetching results. So it takes a while for it to update everything in the library, but it is way faster than what Readar was before, where you know, you'd search for an author and it just would fail. So there you have it. Now you have corrective lenses for Readar using reading glasses. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon members get early access to my videos, and they're both ad and sponsor free. I'll leave a link down in the description. Until then, check out one of these next. And I'll see you in that one.